Welcome to the Accessible Sink Seminar. In this video I'm going to cover the process of creating an accessible kitchen sink and adding it to the library. I've used this sink in a separate accessible kitchen seminar if you're interested in watching more. Let's go through the steps to build this sink. As I begin the process of creating the sink you can see the accessible standard from the National Kitchen and Bath Association on the right hand side of the screen. So I'm going to begin by creating a 34 inch high cabinet by 36 inches and then we'll take a look at how to create the shape so you can get your accessibility the wheelchair underneath the sink to meet these guidelines. Let me begin the process by going to the floor plan view and placing our cabinet. Now using the base cabinet tool I'm going to place a cabinet right next to the existing sink that we've been looking at in the 3D in the elevation view. I'm going to resize this to be 36 inches. Notice the nomenclature updates 36 inches wide and I've already set the height of this to be 34 inches. As we open up the cabinet I'm going to click on the front I'm going to delete this face item and remove the opening that it leaves in there. I'm going to go back to the general panel and I'm going to create a very large toe kick. For the toe kick height that's going to give us a clearance I'm going to set it to be 27 inches and on the depth I'm going to set it to be 17 inches. If I just slide my dialog over here just a little bit the toe kick is going to be 27 inches which is this space in here and then the depth of it is 17 inches which will meet this minimum as well. And then for the shape of the cabinet I'm actually going to draw this in an elevation view. As you can see in the 3D view we've created this cabinet and what I want to do now is I want to take an apron sink. I'm going to resize it to make it fit into the space as you can see in the finished one. and I'm going to drop that into the cabinet and then in an elevation view we'll go ahead and draw the shape of the cabinet box and then I'm going to place the doors so you can see that process. I've created a sink that will fit into this accessible sink base and you can see it here in my 3D view in my library. I'm going to show you the process that I've done to create that sink itself. I'm just going to search for a basic apron sink and place it off to the side over here and then I'm going to go through some modifications to that sink and I'm going to start with the sizing of it. I'm going to go ahead and set it to be five and a half inches, 34 and a half for the sizing and then on the depth of it I'm going to leave that at 19 inches. The floor to bottom or floor to top I'm going to set the floor to bottom at 27 inches. Since I'm going to mark this to fits in a countertop it's not really a big deal in that case and then on the object information or on the label panel you can specify a label. I'll just call it a sink for now. And the other thing I need to do on this is I actually need to now modify the symbol itself. I'm going to modify this to fit into a countertop. There's a marking right here. Inserts into the countertop. Typically an apron sink would sit on top of your countertop what I'm going to do in that case is on the 3D information. So I'm going to lower that to the nine and a half inches. I believe that's what the original symbol height was. And a negative value in the Z value, we'll just move it down that amount. So those are the changes that I need to make. If you want to also on the uh, sink itself you could come in here and call it accessible sink or just sink. And once I have that set up I can now add that into my library and with it set up I can come over here and click and place that inside of the cabinet itself. Press the tab key and then I'll just slide it towards the front of it and that will have the apron stick out just slightly and we go in back into the 3D view and take a look at it. You can see the sink has placed its surface mount and it then matches the other sink that we have and now to get this shape for the other sink base I'm going to go ahead and do an elevation view and I'm just going to basically trace around that with my line tool and then I'm going to convert it to a solid and then I'll place those doors separately and angle them to match it. So from the plan view let's go ahead and open up my existing section camera. In this section view I'm going to use the line tool. I'm going to trace around the shape below the cabinet sink. Using the line tool let's just come in here and I'm going to create a series of lines that just kind of follow the existing one. And I'm not going to be too exact about this but I'm just going to trace out a rectangular trapezoid type shape. Once I've finished that I'm going to convert that into a solid down here in my lower menu convert to polyline. What I'm going to do is I'm going to convert that to a polyline solid and when we set that as a conversion let's go ahead and set the depth of this to be 36 inches. In the 3D view you can see that solid. Let me close that other view. You can see the solid has created. Let's use our material 
painter, pick up the wood material, and we'll apply that onto the solid. And then in the plan view, I'm just going to position that in front of the other cabinets. So let's go back to the floor plan view. I'm going to grab this component in here, and I'm just going to slide that over onto the cabinet. And I may need to use the center tool here. And then I'll probably take one more section view, a clean section view, and make sure that I have it aligned exactly. So in this view, I'm just going to slide this over until it fits into the corner there. And once I have that into position, you can see that we should be in pretty good shape back in the camera view. And all I need to do now is to place these doors and angle them on the front. And to do that, I'm just going to search for a frame door in the library. You can use any door style. Once you find this door style, I'm just going to come over here and place this right in this view right here. And it's going to say that usually you place these on a cabinet itself. We'll go ahead and place it freeform. And before I do anything, let's remove the label off of that. So I'm just going to come in here and suppress the label. And then from the existing front elevation camera, from this view, what I usually like to do is slide this up and position the door about the right height. And you'll notice in the finished one, I drew a line over the top or the center of the cabinet. Let's draw one more line. I'll just use these as a guideline. And sometimes I'll just place a dimension. Let's just go ahead and place a dimension in here. And I want that to be exactly centered. So I'm going to just use this guideline to center it on the cabinet. Now we can zoom in. And I'm just going to slide this right over into the cabinet box itself. And a little bit of work on the reveal. But before I do that, I want to actually take a view of this this from the side of the back clip cross section and I need to angle the door so that it matches that angled front that we're looking at here. So back into the new section view that we drew. I'm going to grab that cabinet door. We'll slide it back and then using the rotate I'm just going to slide this to the same angle and when you do this sometimes it wants to regenerate in your plan view a 2D block and in this case I'm going to say no and I'm just going to slide this into place using my move handle and we'll just get it into an approximate shape. I might need to adjust this slightly. So from this view I'm just going to grab my material eyedropper and apply that onto the two different doors and then I'll just probably grab this faucet and copy it in the plan view. If I toggle on the glass house view you can actually see I put the plumbing access in here. If you're curious to how I drew that plumbing access you can watch the accessible sink video that I've done and you can see how I drew that with a 3D molding polyline to trace that. So let's go back into our plan view and I'm just going to borrow the uh, faucet that I have from this cabinet and I'll just slide a copy of it over onto the other cabinet and then back into the 3D view we pretty much finished everything that we needed. Now the final step is to block this and add it into your library. I'm going to draw a marquee around all of those components. While it's still selected I'll deselect the camera itself. I'm going to click on the block command, make architectural block in my lower menu. And when that's finished, I will then add it into the library using the add to library button. That will show up in my library. And then I'll give it a name of something like accessible sync. And now I can place that and reuse it for future work, as you can see in the uh, 3D view that we have set up here. So that's the process of creating your accessible sink. If you're interested in learning more, you can watch the accessible kitchen seminar where I use this sink for an entire accessibility design for a kitchen. Thanks for watching the video.